All right, we're over at the fryer. We're gonna have to yell, make sure we can be heard over the hood. Uh, two groups will be here at once, but just two people total. So whoever's frying, help each other out. Another set of hands. We've got one basket going this way and one basket going the other way. You guys should recall that chicken is done when it's at 165. All right, but these pieces are so small, it may be hard to take their temp. What I need you to appreciate is that this egg is gonna create a coating, okay, crispiness, but it also can make a huge mess in the basket. So, because this is raw, not laid out in a sheet pan and frozen with the coating on it, do not drop the chicken in the basket to lower it down, okay? Um, and, and have it sitting there for a very long time, okay? You don't wanna put chicken directly in the oil Okay, because it's more likely going to splash on you. But when you go to put it in this basket, dip it so it's wet. Quickly get it in there as separated as you can before you dunk it underneath to move it around to fry. You're going to definitely want metal tongs for moving things around and taking them out. Okay, we have our spider or skimmer as well. And uh, I'm using my glove probably to drop them to make sure they're all loose and independent. If they get fried together as chunks, we'll work it out on the back end. All right, and then finally, once it goes in the uh, perforated pan to drain off the side, then we got our square pan for when it's actually done, where it's safe. All right, so dunk, so it's kind of pre-wet, dropping these down, kind of spreading them around some. They are sticking together as a mass, which is to be expected. Okay, but we're going to um, drop that in the oil and mix it up. Now, contaminate hand, do not grab the handle. Drop it with the other one. You can take off your glove. All right, as they start to cook and fry, right away try to mix them up some. Bring them up to help break them up. see pieces right there break apart a little bit all right if I take it out to take a look real quick I kind of see where there's pieces so maybe break apart be careful moving this around that it doesn't splash you in the eye with tongs kind of cut it in half That's a big chunk. You see it's all raw inside. And go back down. You can really see some bubbles come up now with the moisture from the egg. All right, when we have uh, frozen pieces of chicken, oftentimes when they float, they're done. That's not gonna be the case with this. Pull it up and take a look again. It's really starting to get crispier, holding its individual shape. There was one chunk. Now it is starting to float. You may start thinking about checking the temp. So pull that up. Take a piece. Got to use one of our digital thermometers and understand that you can't go all the way through. We're touching to the middle. When 90s and beyond, I think we're going to be good. Another big chunk. 170s, 180s, and beyond. All right, so these are done. You check many, many pieces. Make sure there is no part of the chicken. That got stuck together, so when they get done all the way through, because this is the thigh meat with extra fat, so it's likely to get dried out as the breast. So if I felt like, ah, I'm going to shake it up a little bit more, then we're good. Shake that off. Get all the oil poured in your colander. So 
that that can then go into your square pan about that movie. And then this is going back. Square is safe. Square is cooked. I can eat it right now, but it could. This is going back to the stove top and stir fry. Guess what it smells like in here? Fried chicken. Because it is fried chicken. Let's go make our sauce. All right, we're back at the kitchen. I have an amazing partner who did all the work of cleaning up this countertop while I was over at the fryer. That's the way we want to get things done. Let's get ready to go on our stir fry. All right, and so as we slide on over to the stove, you're going to see a wok that you are accustomed to. Now I'm going to start heating up to get it ready to go. But got to understand there's going to be two of you guys so someone potentially is gonna have to go with this style wok. It is also flat on the bottom, but it has two round handles on the side, Cantonese style. Okay, and over in the other burner, we hope to not have to get to this, but if we got woks that get torched, this is more traditional old school round wok. It will wobble, okay, when it's not on a ring. And so we flip this grate over to support it and then it doesn't do that. But that makes stuff puddle on the bottom, so not a huge fan of using it for this application. So we hope we can both use flat bottom locks. You guys have your shovels? Okay, we should be ready to go because the process itself is pretty darn quick. All right, so one more ingredient that we had to measure out that's coming over is our red pepper flakes, a half teaspoon. That's not gonna go in for very long. Okay, and this whole process is gonna happen pretty quickly. All right, two tablespoons of oil, your canola. Just going to be the ginger and garlic first. A little quick stir fry. Move that around. Give it a head start. Definitely don't want it to burn. Scallions, red pepper flakes. You're gonna release some heat. Don't breathe that in. Less than 10 seconds. They turn black. You messed up. Start over. This flavor everything. Your sauce now is gonna get poured in. And that hopefully had a chance for all the sugar to get dissolved. If it did not, Make sure you get it out of the bottom. See, there's some in there. This is on high heat. It's gotta to come to a boil before the meat goes in. The chicken's already cooked. All this sauce is going to do is coat it. Careful where these go if they were hot. So we'll put down time lapse or speed it up to get to come to a boil, but then my chicken's going to go in. Once you've added your sauce, put the heat on high to help this come to a boil or a simmer as quickly as it can. And at that point, the chicken's going to be added in so that the starch and the coating can help to thicken up the sauce. Can get the chicken in so it gets reheated and has a chance for that starch to react. All right, now you definitely want to coat this, let this cook, let that starch do its work of thickening, make a decision about our slurry. whether or not we're gonna use it. Now there's already cornstarch in there and flour. That's gonna do some of that work for us. So I'd rather let that kind of have a chance to play itself out before I just automatically throw in the slurry. 
And it's a matter of preference as far as how thick you like your sauce. We have uh, rice to pour this over. And you may want it more wet than others. All right, now if you're gonna add the slurry, you wouldn't necessarily do it until this is up to a boil anyway. So let it have a chance to come up to a boil. And really let the starch coating work on this before we decide. Our concern is we add all the slurry in, it starts to react. It keeps thickening as it cools down. You might make yourself a batch of orange chicken and a gelatin, all right? So now that that's starting to thicken up, I'm gonna actually say that this was two tablespoons of water. Gotta make sure it's mixed up again. I'm just gonna go one. That was a little bit less. One and see how it goes. So I may not have to use both. It may not show on camera, but that's starting to thicken up right away. And I think that's gonna be sufficient. For how I'm gonna want it, over rice. You guys want it thicker, tighter sauce, add all the slurry. But I'm good with that. All right, so this is gonna come off in our square. Remember that your wok has to cool down a little bit. It's gonna be washed with hot water and no soap. Then back to our dish. Traditional potential garnish. Some sesame seeds. Maybe splash the sesame oil, which makes it start to seem like sesame chicken. You don't have to do this if you want. All right, and that is my finished orange chicken. I'm gonna scoop that up, put on some rice after I do my cleanup.